Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager, here once again with another video on The Flash Season 5. So one of the big things around this season of The Flash is that of the past, the present, and the future. And we have dipped a bit into both the past and the future, and as you would expect, we have spent a lot of time in the present. But the thing that has many people curious is, of course, that of the future. Now, back in episode three of this season, we went into like a flashback of Nora's, but in the future, where we saw her in the Flash Museum as a young girl, I think younger than what we saw in episode 12, which gave us a look at a few cool things in the Hall of Villains, which were visited again in the most recent episode of The Flash, as I sort of hinted at then, that being episode 12. But in episode 12, we got to see more of the Flash Museum, which also came with a, you know, a lot more cool little nods to the history of the Flash. So in this video, that's what we are going to go over. So of course, let's do that. But let me know if I missed out anything that was like really highlighted in the Flash Museum. I might have missed out on something. I'm not too sure if I did. That's why I'm asking you guys to let me know. And also just let me know your favorite thing that you saw in the museum or that I bring up in this video. So as I said before, the Hall of Villains was the place we visited initially back in episode 3, and we also spent a decent amount of time there in this episode as well. But when Barry and Iris arrive to the Flash Museum in this episode through Nora's memories, on this sign in the back here, we also have Gift Shop, Hall of Villains, as well as the Hall of Heroes. So I, for one, am hoping that at another point in this season that we might get to have a look at the Hall of Heroes and see, you know, the various costumes and weaponry and gadgets and stuff like that in there used by, well, heroes. I wonder if it will just have, you know, heroes that are centered around the show of The Flash, you know, that would have been on Team Flash, which is like, you know, Vibe, Elongated Man, I guess Frost or Killer Frost and, you know, other people like that, Firestorm, you know, stuff like that. Or if we would also be including heroes like Green Arrow, Supergirl, and characters like that. You know, people that just, you know, have worked with The Flash and deserve some recognition. Regardless, hopefully we get to visit it at some point this season. Because, uh, well, let's just be honest, it'd be pretty damn awesome. Now, the voice that can be heard over the top when we are in The Flash Museum is that of Dexter Miles, who is the curator of The Flash Museum in both the comics and now the TV show. We know that Nora mentioned a Mr. Miles earlier this season, but we were unsure of whether it was Dexter or not, as Dexter Miles already did appear back in Season 1 and was connected to Central City Museum, but it looks like in the future, he decides to uh, swap museums. Now, when Barry and Iris enter the Flash Museum, obviously they're a bit, you know, overcome and overwhelmed with what they are seeing because it's pretty creepy. Well, not creepy, but just, you know, as I said, pretty wicked. But in the foreground of the shot of them arriving, we can see two little boys uh, playing with some plush toys. Now, those plush toys are of King Shark and Gorilla Grodd, or at least a shark and a gorilla. I think it would have been maybe a bit too expensive to make a King Shark and Gorilla Grodd toy. Anyway... Obviously, these toys are foreshadowing the fight between these two characters that we will be seeing around episode 15 or 16 of this season. Now, throughout the museum, you can also see like various displays and other toys for both of these characters as well. So these two must be some of the, uh, you know, the fan favorites of the Flash Museum for visitors outside of, you know, your main man, uh, that being the Flash, of course. Now, one of the major little references and fun things in this episode that people would have caught would have been when Caitlin and Sherlock were trying to contact Nora, Barry, and Iris inside of the memories of both Grace and Nora. Now, when contacting Barry and Iris, one of the, uh, the flash phones in the museum go off, and what plays for the ringtone is the theme song for the show, but, you know, of course, in a more polyphonic style. Now, this just gives me flashbacks of having my, like, LG flip phone back when I was, like, 13 years old or something. So, uh, thanks, uh, Flash TV show for making me feel way older than I actually am. Like, does anyone still use flip phones? Let me know. Anyway. Now, as I was saying before, when Barry and Iris first arrived in the Flash Museum, they were both, you know, a bit overwhelmed and overcome with what they were seeing, which is understandable. There were some, uh, some you know, there was some pretty cool stuff in there. But Barry was obviously the one freaking out the most, and really, he was just fanboying over himself. Like, don't get me wrong, I think we all would as well. You know, it's way too cool seeing all that stuff. But we do see Barry go towards the bobblehead section, which could be a reference to the Honest Trailers video from Screen Junkies on The Flash, where they point out that Grant Gustin sort of resembles a bobblehead in a lot of scenes on the show, where his head will be moving a lot, while the rest of his body just basically stays still. So... 
you know, it'd be pretty funny if uh, that was a nice little reference to that. But an important thing to take note of, you know, just for the meme of it, I guess, is that these bobbleheads don't actually have chin straps. They're basically the season five suit. So is this confirmation that there will be no more chin strap on any suit going forward for the Flash? You let me know in the comments. Now, even though this one is an obvious one that I'm sure many, many people know of and have either like watched videos on or researched themselves or both, and that is when Barry and Iris follow the young Nora into the Hall of Villains again, and we see Nora approach the Cicada display again from uh, episode three, which has changed around a bit, where we learn that Cicada has killed 152 people from David Singh. He tells us this, but it's Rising, which is more than Zoom, as well as the Red Death. Now, the Red Death being an amalgamation of Bruce Wayne and Barry Allen, aka Batman and the Flash from Earth-52 from the DC Metal storyline that started, I think, last year. I think it was just last year. Now, I have done a whole video on that and where that could lead and all various things like that. I will leave a link in the description down below for those that will just care and would like to watch it, I guess. Now, in the Flash Museum, in the gift shop, that is, we had some, uh, well, many real-life comic books laid out, and I think I got all of them. However, I think there could be more that I didn't see. If I did miss out on any, let me know in the comment section down below, because I'm not 100% sure if I got them all. But the ones that I did catch were DC Rebirth number one of The Flash, which, as you would expect from the numbering, is the introduction of The Flash in this, like, mini reboot, uh, reboot thing that they did. And this is the issue that also introduces the... Uh, what should, what, what should we call him? Uh, the infamous Godspeed and either, you know, the character that either brightened people's lives or turned their lives into a living hell. Now, DC Rebirth number 22 is also seen, which was also part uh, or a part of the Button crossover with Batman. Some of you might have read that. Jay Garrick is on the cover as this was the issue that he returned in in a pretty epic way. So, um, yeah, there's your little Jay Garrick connection as well. Jay Garrick would probably be a character that's in the Hall of Heroes. DC Rebirth number 39 is also seen clearly, and as you can see, it has Grodd on the cover as he returns here in this issue. And the last comic cover I could see is another one that is seen, well, pretty clearly in the episode focus of, uh, focuses on it, and that, that is actually uh, the comic that is being read by the young Nora. And that is issue number 172 of The Flash from, I think, the early, oh, sorry, the late 90s or early 2000s. Now, this comic cover has Cicada on it, as well as Magenta getting ready to sacrifice the Wally West Flash. So, this was a cool thing to add to the episode. Now, Cicada, for those that didn't know, wasn't actually, like, that big of a villain in the comics. His arc wasn't that big or that grand, at least in comparison to some other villains who haven't even been given, like, a look-in to possibly being a villain on the show. Now, this issue of The Flash does highlight the cult of Cicada. You can sort of see it at the top of the issue, which could hopefully be something that we see this season at some point, whether it's through all in or maybe through grace or some uh, something else like that it'd be interesting to see if they brought it in because the cult of savitar was never really well embraced and used properly in season three so it'd be pretty cool if they were able to use this cult of another villain in a better way now we do see a plethora of flash action figures and toys throughout the gift shop of the flash museum these figures and toys are sort of like a, a mix of stylings from the show of the flash itself which is pretty meta as well as from the comics like the comic scene in the gift shop, all these figures and toys are things you can actually buy like right now in real life, like online or in store. So this was like a mini advertisement by Warner Brothers and DC Comics to sell some stuff and clear some stock, then hey, it might work. Now when Barry and Iris are sort of on the run and hiding from the, like, the, the reverse flash defense mechanism uh, mannequin thing that Nora had set up, we can actually see the final battle from the season two finale between the Flash and Zoom playing on one of the TVs. Now, I was like super confused when I saw this. I was like, okay, that's maybe a bit too far. Like I can take the comics, the toys and all of that. But seeing that footage uh, was pretty interesting. Just like, just wow. Anyway, it is a pretty quick thing that pops up and isn't like the easiest thing to see just due to like the flashing of the TV and the filter that was put over Nora's memories and stuff like that. And the last thing to bring up that is a sort of Easter egg in this episode actually has nothing to do with the Flash Museum, but towards the beginning of this episode, we see Team Flash go ice skating. And as you would expect, most of them are rugged up to keep warm, and in the case of Ralph, wearing a headgear. But Caitlin is actually wearing an Easter egg, not an actual egg, but Caitlin is actually wearing a take on the bombshell version of Killer Frost, as you can see the two compared here. So I think that is one of the, uh, the cooler uh, Easter eggs and little references and just 
things in this episode. But thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome. You could drop a like on the video, show support. Let me know in the comments section down below which one of the things I went over did you enjoy the most? Did I miss out on anything? Let me know any of that in the comments section down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye.